Yeah, here with Rob Burdots, uh Vintage Wings uh, pilot. Uh, first of all, Rob, we just went up in the air. That was that was awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was fun for me too. Um, okay, now let's be honest. Was I like the wimpiest person that you've ever taken up in the air? Uh, absolutely not. You know, it's a completely <laughs> new world for people, and uh, that's how you react when you're upside down for the first time. Yeah. Oh man, I, it, it was crazy. It was hot. It was like muggy in there, and and then the G forces. They just they they felt like they were pulling my face down. Absolutely, and they're pulling the blood down out of your head, and they're uh, making you uh, compress in your seat. Uh, like I said, when you open the throttle, dramatic things happen. It's a new world for you. <laughs> and uh, so you said we were feel I was feeling like a G G two, right? Yeah, that was really gentle. I was about uh, two two and a half G. Uh, that was just an introduction to aerobatics, but it sure is different, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? When we maneuver, uh, we maneuver to four four and a half G all the time, uh, upside down, right side up. You do get used to that. That's just my office where I work. <laughs> <laughs> that is so neat. Uh, tell me for a second now about. Uh, Vintage Wings in Canada. Uh, what it is that you, what is it that you guys do? Vintage Wings is a charitable foundation based in uh, Gatineau, Quebec, near Ottawa. And we have a collection of really special aeroplanes so with historical significance to Canada and Canadians from the era around uh, World War II, a little before, a little after. And uh, these aeroplanes keep alive in our memory the uh, sights and sounds and the experience that uh, people uh, had when they were uh, using those aeroplanes to uh, win a war. And uh, tell me about the plane that we were in, the Harvard? Yeah, it's a Harvard Mark IV, and that was a uh, World War II trainer of some renown. Everybody who went off to fight, uh, bomber command, instructors, uh, fighter pilots, they had to contend with that Harvard. And it's a great trainer because it's uh, not so easy to fly. As you saw, <laughs> it's blind, it's loud, it's unstable, uh, and it has a ton of power. Uh, so when you uh, unleash all that on a student, uh, he's going to really have to rise to the challenge. Uh, it was uh, such a great trainer. It was used until the late 60s uh, in just about all the NATO countries. Now, okay, let me ask you this. If you guys come back, you know, next year or sometime, uh, if I were to go up again, what, what should I, like, can I eat something that would make me uh, stomach it a little better? Yeah, people always ask that. I say just uh, go flying. You know, it's an environment that you habituate to with time. Uh, the second flight would be easier than the uh, first. Uh, by uh, 15 flights, I'd um, probably uh, let you go solo. Uh, people really do learn to do that and enjoy it. Uh, just, uh, I think you need another lesson. <laughs> All right, man. Well, that's the date, Dan. It's a plan. If you come back next year, uh, we'll do it again. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rob. You're welcome.